I'm Pastor George Borkhart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Woke religion. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, pass it on that faith to the next generation. Like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications. Get the app. It's available on all major platforms. And donate. Tax deductible gift to higherthings.org keeps us filling the ears of the church's youth with the gospel. And they need that gospel in these dark times. Woke Wednesday gives us an opportunity to talk to Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things and also um, a former high school school teacher in Minneapolis. Erica, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks, Pastor Borkhart. How are you today? We agreed after our last talk, uh, that um, uh, the Check Your Privilege video, they would come back and talk about the topic of privilege. Um, today, you are revising this topic more. So, Erica, what are we talking about today? What's woke religion? Well, I thought we might even zoom out a little bit, but um, after after we spoke last time, I think we both realized we needed to, to kind of come back at it again. Um, there were some comments uh, that we were maybe a little ham-handed, a little tone deaf, a little clueless. Um, so I thought we should come back and try to clarify and um, talk about it again a little bit. Um, so I think we should start with a disclaimer and you can uh, agree or disagree with me or correct me or add on if you wish. Um, I, I certainly don't wish to, to um, proclaim that there has been no history of racism or that there isn't currently any racism um, in America. Um, you know, certainly we had the civil rights rights act of 1964 for a reason. Um, We've had decades of affirmative action. Um, we've had a lot of um, social welfare, welfare spending. We've had a black president. We, we, we've sort of had um, it, to deny sort of the, the existence of racism or um, the sin that is going on in the world was, I don't think, what you or I were after, correct? Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to start out with that disclaimer. Um, it's wrong um, and it, it, it needs to end. So I just wanted to say that to uh, sort of start out with. I do, um, I see some um, some reason to discuss some of the other things that are going on in the culture. And so that's what we're attempting to do today. We're gonna kind of zoom out and talk a little bit about is sort of woke becoming the new religion? Um, has it, is it sort of what's come about um, in sort of our post-Christian world today? And so um, I wanted to start out by uh, talking about a quote that comes from uh, Robin D'Angelo, who uh, wrote the best-selling book right now called White Fragility. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not. Um, but she said that for white people, having racist assumptions is inevitable. Uh, straight white men have been involved in a witness protection program that absolves them of their crime, she declares. Um, and so I think we see... Uh, in the culture today, in America today, you see sort of educational, business, media, nonprofits, um, the entertainment industry sort of taking up this wokeness, this um, uh, sort of charge against systemic racism um, and sort of declaring their virtue and um, that being the right thing to do. Now, it's it gets tricky um, because as I've, as I've just said, you and I, racism is wrong. I think some of the suppositions behind um, wokeness uh, may be um, incompatible with our faith. Um, and so that's why you and I are talking about it. So my question to you um, is, do you think that wokeness has become a new religion? Is woke the new way of being saved? What do you think, Pastor Borkhart? Oh, um, I'm not. I wasn't expecting a question because that's, that's hey. a deviation from the norm. Um, I, but I, I, I would say anything can take over the top spot. Um, it depends on the the time. 
Um, even in Christianity, we can see uh, very good Christian teachers and pastors who one topic takes over. Uh, so they, they're, they're, uh, the topic of, of, of uh, abortion takes over. Um, I have to take a little hard look at myself when I was younger, the topic of youth ministry took over and that became the main thing that we cared about, um, over and against the whole of our faith. Um, I think there's a self-righteousness in the woke movement, which, um, which is almost religious, uh, that, so, so the tenants are, um, every, every, from the white fragility book, right. every white person is racist. Every white person thinks bad thoughts and it can go so far as every white person's evil. And, and it also goes to the country. One of the tenets of the creeds is, is the country is founded on racism. Right. And therefore the country's bad and the system itself needs to be undone. Anybody related to the system is evil. The self-righteous element comes in is that, is that that allows me to, to think highly of myself if I'm woke and repentant. Um, it allows me to judge others if they're not. Um, I think one of the, um, one of my dear friends, uh, had an issue with our last video and he thought we were rather defensive. And I think the subject matter, um, I, I don't believe we were defensive. I, uh, defensive. I thought we were sort of walking on eggshells. I tried to respond to him, but YouTube kept changing my comments. And so hmm. I, I just sort of threw in the towel. I'm like, I, I don't know. but, um, yes, we all suffer from original sin, which means we all have an inborn hatred of others or a love for ourselves. And love of self. Yeah. Love of yeah. ourself. Yeah. Got it. Good. Yeah. And so we have that sort of inborn religion that we are already fighting with. And so in a sense, yeah, everyone suffers from hating others or loving others less than they love themselves. Yeah. Does that mean that you can blanket attribute sins to people? I don't think so. I don't think that's fair. And then if they, if they say something, then you can shut them off by simply saying, well, that's your privilege. You, we're not able to have a discussion then. You know what I mean? That, that it, 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 it stops everything from going down. And again, I'm going to swing back again because my dear friend missed this in the video. Um, the idea that someone would be stopped by the police and worried because of their color, of their skin, that they're going to be treated differently than someone else is evil. The idea that anyone gets a special privilege because of the color of their skin or where they were born is evil. That needs to be set against a, a, a movement, a group which is, I mean, there are, there are uh, pastors of all Christian denominations, of all colors, who recognize that Black Lives Matter, their, some of their tenets is anti-Christian, the, the destruction of the nuclear family. Um, mm -hmm. right. so, the, so we got that cis, um, semantic overload that occurs when, two sen when a sentence is able to be used in two different ways. One, do black lives matter? Yes, black lives do matter. No one should be scared because of, uh, or be treated differently because of the color of their skin. And two, an organization which is um, Marxist by its own definition or um, anti-nuclear family, anti-Christian, anti, anti I mean, that's Marxist though, anti anything which is a, which is a social order. So is it a religion? I think there's a religion by fear. There are inquisitors. There, 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 there are inquisitors. There are words. There, there's a language. There's a liturgy. There's repentance. It certainly looks like a religion. It's also a religion that we can do rather there's easily. Penance. There's, penance. there's penance. There's a religion that we can do rather easily, which is our favorite religion as, a, as, as sinners is a religion that we can do rather easily. But does that mean that there might not be something to the fact that we hate other people based upon their differences? Yeah, there is. And that's evil. Does everybody hate other people because of their... If, 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 if I had told the story of, of my son who never never saw in the town that he was growing up in, never saw um, anyone of color. It was a majority Midwest town. Um, they, you know, they, they used to say that 
I was a racist because I was from the South, but there were five. They knew all five black families in the community. And I was like, you, you see the problem in that, don't you? Like I'm, I'm from a place where it's like amazingly diverse and five, but he, but he had a moment where he, he didn't, he wasn't comfortable around somebody who'd look differently from him. He has since changed and he doesn't even remember that moment. And we raised him. I raised him from that point forward that, that every God created all people. Is he a, is he a racist? I, 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 it's just, so is it a religion? I think it's got all the marks of religion, uh, especially the ability, the easy ability to do this. It's easy to do this religion. It's popular to do this religion right now. No one will suffer for doing this religion. In fact, the inquisitors will get them for the opposite. In fact, that was why we were a little nervous on the last video. Yeah. Because if yeah. we say something wrong, holy hell's going to break out. I was glad a friend said it to me because I wasn't defensive about it. I was just saying, like, that's not what we were talking about. Um, so... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, yeah. So I was criticized in our last video um, and told sort of that I can't dialogue with you on the concept of white privilege because I am white. Mm -hmm. um, and sort of I was immediately dismissed as someone who doesn't have enough context or contact uh, with um, black and brown folks. Um so I guess my, my next question to you would be, Pastor Borghardt, what do I, um, do I have, a, do I, should I be speaking as a Christian? Um, what, sh what, what can I do? How can I love and serve my neighbor? Um, despite the fact that I'm white, uh, um, what am I called to do? There is in and of itself a, I'm trying to find the word for it, an ignorance or an academic sloppiness going on. Um, it's the issue that matters. Can you speak sensibly on the issue? All right. Um, and, and that is like, so we, we can't talk about something. Now we're not, we wouldn't do this in the faith. We would still allow a Christian to speak on Islam. Maybe. Um, I mean, it's the issue, it's studying the issue and whether you're not, you're, 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 you're sort of, um, you're, um, you've got the issue down. We had the opportunity to interview, um, one of our former CCVs who was black, but I mean, the thought upset them and the thought upsets me. It's either, because then we're doing the same thing to them that, you know what I mean? Like, come and be our token. Right. Um, right. That, that's that's just wrong. And and before we even went forward to ask, um, I was already against it. You know what I mean? So it's the issue that matters. In an intellectual discussion, it's the issue that matters. It's an ad hominem. It's, a, it's an illogical argument to say, you can't talk about it because you are a woman. You can't talk about it because you're white. You can't talk about it because you're you're heterosexual. You can't talk about it because you don't check any of the boxes that matter. And the response is, well, there's an experience that you don't have or you lack. But again, if we're talking about the issue itself, the ad hominem attacks are not helpful. Um, and so, yeah, you either can talk about the issue or you're, you can't. This, uh, one of our, my, my dear friend was like, they, you guys don't grasp the issue because you've never, ever experienced it. How does one know that <laughs> without walking a mile in our shoes, which is kind of ironic in this context? So right? this is the this is the this is the self righteousness yeah. of it. Um, yes. Again, um, this is the same. It's the same issue with picking people for positions in in things solely based on the way they look. So it's wrong to pick a skinny person over, but it's not wrong to pick someone of color over it's it it, it it reason is sort of breaking down here now that's that again everybody should be considered on their merits without any sort of um 
look at the person. Are, are, they, are they qualified for the position? And it would be evil to, to, to set someone to side based solely upon how they look. It just would be. Again, and this is why I wanted to bring it back to Christ in the uh, thing, because one, um, woke culture is so anti-Christian, it made me smile to do so. And two, because it's the only answer. Why do we believe that all people um, should be treated the same? Should be looked at the same. It's because have inherent value. And have inherent value, the same inherent value. All, all life matters. Um, because Christ, because they were created by God, and Christ died for all. The 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 Iraqi in in um in Iraq has the same value <laughs> as an American. Um a white person has the same value as a black person. A black person has the same value as a Hispanic person because we were all created by God. And again, that is to find our identity outside of ourselves rather than inside ourselves. This religion is going to come to a, the, the woke religion will come to a, a screeching halt as soon as, as the reason and logic catch up with it. Um, it and it will happen eventually and it will crumble. Um, it's like postmodernism is crumbling. It just doesn't work. Um, it's not going to fix the world. <laughs> it, it, this isn't going to change the world. Yeah. The only thing that's going to change the world is, is the suffering and death of Christ. And if you don't want that answer, then to love others more than you love yourself and to treat others as you'd like to be treated. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's, that's the golden rule, the moral of the story, the, the end. Um, but again, this is a tough topic and I want to make sure to say it again, that racism in any form is anti-Christian. That, that, that discriminating against somebody based upon their color or treating somebody differently based on how they look is inherently unchristian and evil and, and a fruit of original sin. But that again, that does not mean that you can make a blanket statement and say that everyone... It, it would be as wrong as saying that to someone who doesn't talk that they're a gossip. Right. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Final thoughts. Uh, no, I just, uh, I, I thought you did a good job. I and mean, I, I, I would say that, um, you, the way is Christ. Um, your, your identity is found outside yourself. For me, that's a, that's a really important takeaway. Um, I am who I am because of what Christ did for me. Um, and I'm free now to love and serve my neighbor. Um, and Christ didn't just die for me. He died for everybody. Um, and so it's really hard, uh, when you believe that you're reminded that of that weekly, um, to, um, you know, to sort of, to, um, think that wokeness is going to, is going to one up that. Um, right. Yeah. Which on the surface, it's really not a bad thought. I want, right. I want to be awake to the, to the world around me and be sensitive to the needs of others. Uh, but there's a better way, and that is to love others as you love yourself. To love others more than you love yourself and to treat others as you'd like to be treated. Then you don't have to be a certain nationality or race to talk about it. It's just a matter of loving each other. It's just a matter of loving each other. Erica Jacoby is the uh, 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 executive director of Higher Things. She is um, uh, also uh, a former school teacher in the Minneapolis school system. Thank you, Erica. Thanks for having me. He died for all means he died for you. He died for me too. And in that commonality, in that communion, we will find all the love and peace that we're looking for. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short. <laughs>